Hi, this is Shady Atia, professor at Liège University in Belgium, and today's presentation is about data processing as part of observational research. The presentation is a part of a playlist on observational research. I invite you to watch previous videos. Well, I'm going to focus today on observational research or correlation research as part of the research family that is non-manipulative, and we are looking here as a follow-up for questionnaires. The objective of today's presentation is to learn about processing and analyzing data collected through a questionnaire or measurements. And the second objective is to look at various steps of data preparation and inspection needed in order to prepare you for the next step of data analysis and data statistical processing. I need to remind you that there are two types of primary data, uh, two types of data collection methods, the primary quantitative data collection method and the secondary quantitative data collection method. Primary data, we mean by it observations done through mechanical uh, devices or through humans, through surveys, interviews or questionnaires. And when we talk about secondary quantitative data collection methods, we are talking mainly about secondary data that is found in data sets that are available online or in physical repositories or into archives. Now I'm going to talk today about the sample size, I'm going to talk about the responses formulation and its influence of your uh, data set, the data coding, how you transform your questionnaire into codes, uh, the statistical softwares that could you be used, indicators and variables, the data reliability, and some takeaway messages. Now when we talk about the sample size, it's so important because actually you have to define the sample size and you have to define the targeted sample size that you want to collect uh, at the end of your survey or at the end of your uh, measurement campaign. And you need to ask yourself, are the amount of question or the measurements administered enough to perform the statistical analysis. So even if you are doing me measurement with uh, uh, devices, you need to ask yourself, do I have enough measurements that I can stop my uh, field study and I can start now to process this information? And therefore, it's very important to take this into account. And actually, you stop your experiment or you stop your data collection depending on your sampling framework and depending on your sample size and once you reach saturation uh, and representation with your data. Another important point that you need to take into account once you are ready to transform your uh, responses into a data set is look at the responses, especially if you are using a questionnaire and the formulation of these uh, responses. So actually you need to choose appropriate question formats so that they are understandable for the person who answered the survey, but at the same time you need to enable to analyze the results of these questions. And the best way to do it here is to use pilot test. The pilot test can help you do that and through pilot test, you will be able to create a small micro data set, use this micro set directly and start to apply some statistical tests to check how far you will code and interpret the results into uh, cells and bars and into uh, data points. This is an important example that shows that how a questionnaire can evo evolve during the pilot study. We have a first question that was very simple, Taya saying, how did you get to the work today? And you have to tick only one option, walk, car, bus, train, other. It was transformed to be, what transport do you use to travel to work with walk, uh, car, bus, train, to other? Actually, you can see that through the pilot, this questionnaire evolved. And as a consequence, the answer changed and also the coding changed. So therefore, it's very important to look at how the questions are formulated and how the questions will be translated into data points. The same goes with the interval scales. I always recommend to use questionnaires with five level Likert itemized scales or seven level Likert itemized scales so that you can use uh, these um, uh, scales to measure the attitudes and the, ten uh, trend and the tendencies. And being interval, these cores can assist in the analysis of the responses in a very easy way and then by that you can provide every answer a code and based on that you can proceed. So the best way to formulate such uh, uh, um, five or seven level uh, liquid item scale is to have a maximum value, minimum value, keep in between no description, no text, just numbers and have only one value with an adjective or a uh, evaluation very poor or disagree on the other side excellent or agree and leave the respondent to have this uh, attitude measurement in a scale and based that when you translate it into statistical tables and data you can better process it. So the more you are investing time in your responses formulation and your formulation of your questionnaire it will be easier to conduct your analysis if you introduce in your questionnaire complex questions different type of question types if you are introducing loops uh, and if you are introducing branching and what if scenarios in your questionnaire, the questionnaire will be complex, 
the data generated from the questionnaire will be very difficult to treat. It will be, yes, rich, but very complex to treat statistically. So take this into consideration. The third important point to look at is the data coding. How are you going to code the data? And when we talk about data coding here, we need first, before data coding, to form an inspection. We, look to, we need to check for errors, we need to look for completeness, and here we will trace uh, the problems. First of all, we do systematic um, uh, data inspection. Here we look at incorrect keys, uh, incorrect application of the key by human markers, failure of pro pro computer program, for example, to uh, interpret the data correctly. Also, we look for non-systematic errors, like uh, ca a casual uh, mistake in some items, incorrect, incorrect reading of key by human mar uh, marker, um, the incorrect reading of the code by the data entry person, entering wrong information, incorrect entry of the item itself by the data entry person. So this is important to look at. And here we will try to assign a code for every response depending on the questionnaire type. So this is also important to take into account. And here we look at response categories that are determined before the collection. So this is not something that should be happening post uh, field study or questionnaire response uh, uh, collection. It should be already designed early on, therefore the pilot is so important. And based on that, we can look for any missing information. Now, once we have this done, we can look for any information that is missing. And for missing information, there are five strategies that can be conducted. We need to do conversion. We need to convert this data and we need to cover for this data that is missing. And we need to report that, first of all, as part of our data description data set, because once you are having missing data, you must have a file that describes what happens exactly and be transparent. What are the five techniques that we can have for converting data? We can have the deductive imputation, the hot deck, uh, hot, hot deck uh, imputation, the cold deck imputation, the mean value imputation, and the nearest neighbor imputation. And allow me to explain each of them. Well, the deductive imputation is uh, usually the first method used. And this is used when a value can be deducted with certainty and can be completed during the collection, capture, uh, editing, or later stages of the data processing. And this deductive imputation is used when there is only the, uh, when there is only one possible response to the question. For example, all values are given and the total or the subtotal is missing, so it's very easy to replace it by your by yourself. Uh, still, you need to describe it always in your data sheets. Uh, the second type is the hot deck imputation, which uses the answers from another record. So here we are using another record from the same survey, and it is referred as, the, the, as to the donor. We keep using the word donor to answer the question, and uh, the, it needs, uh, the question that needs imputation. And the donor can be randomly selected from a pool of donors with the same set of predetermined characteristics. So this is the hot deck. And then similarly is the cold deck imputation. But the difference here is that the hot deck imputation uses donors from the same survey, but the cold deck imputation uses donors from another source, such as historical data or from earlier iteration of the same survey or from administrative data. And then this moves us to the fourth type of data conversion or imputation, which is the mean value imputation, which is to replace the missing or inconsistent value of the mean value calculated from the responding units with the same set of predetermined characteristics. So this is another example for usage. For example, if a record is missing in a total number of an individual's yearly income, so then we could impute the observed average income in that individual's governorate or province for the same occupation with the same level of experience as the respondent. And here one drawback uh, of the mean imputation is that it destroys the distribution and the relationship between the variable by creating an artificial spike at the group mean, and this artificially lowers the estimated sampling variance uh, of the final estimates if conventional formulas of the sampling variance are used. So this is a force uh, level, and we can go to the last type of imputation, which is the nearest neighbor imputation. Here we are looking at another type of uh, donor imputation. In this case, some sort of criteria must be developed to determine the responding unit um, uh, the most similar to the unit with the missing value in accordance with the predetermined characteristics. And the closest unit to the missing value is then used as the donor. So again, these all information of imputation need to be described as part of your data set once you start preparing and inspecting your data for error or for missing information. Now we are done with this preparation and we prepared our data set. What is now done next to do? 
Well, you need to have a statistical software that you're going to rely on. In this case, you can use SPSS. I strongly recommend using SPSS. Or you can use software like R, also I strongly recommend it. Or you can use Python, which is taking over recently a lot. I also recommend this software as a statistical software. And then you start from there, you can build up your data set in this software and start a statistical test after. But what you need also to take into account the indicators and the variables. So take care of the indicators and the variables that you want to investigate. So variables and indicators are important. Variables are the properties or the characteristics of the concept. Uh, let's say you are measuring the performance of students or pupils at a school. Uh, indicators will measure uh, or quantify this variable, for example, the yearly grade of the reports of the students. Uh, and then turning abstract concept into measurable variables and the indicator is called operationalization. And we talked about operationalization before and then the variable can be executed through indicators. So it's very important to define your indicators and based on that start conducting your statistical test. Now, one of the last steps to do before saying that you're ready to conduct your statistical test is to do some data reliability test or checking. And here I invite, to, invite you to use the consistency test which is the uh, Kronbach alpha test. Well, well, the Kronbach alpha is a coefficient of consistency used to estimate the internal consistency of a scale. And the consistency measures performed uh, before computing the indicators into a variable. And here we can have a questionnaire and the answer spreadsheet. And we directly start to translate the questions into cells with data. And we start to ask yourself, uh, now you want to check if the items uh, here have a high internal consistency or not. So you start to calculate the Kronbach alpha test. And it's a very standardized test. You can use uh, already software that you are working on. And of course, one does not calculate the Kronbach alpha by hand. You need to do it using this statistical software. And by that, you can see how far your data is uh, consistent. Now you can have an interpretation, interpretation coefficient of your alpha value of your Kronbach. If you have a high number uh, closer to one, then you have a perfect reliability or a good test. And if you have a low number uh, around zero, then it is a low quality test. And normally you need to make sure that the reliability is uh, uh, equal or above 0.7 to make sure that you have a reliable test and that your data set is uh, statistically reliable. Um, also, if a low alpha is due to poor correlation between the items, then some should be revised or discarded. If you discover that you're measuring a correlation or you're trying to measure a variance, but you have a very low alpha, then it means that uh, there is no correlation. So you need to discard it and you need to avoid this correlation statistical test. Below 0.6, your value is not measured consistently and is unreliable. So it's important to take this into account. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. Some takeaway messages before I leave. Well, uh, when we start preparing for the data uh, processing and we prepare our data set for statistical tests, there is a lot of steps that need to take into account. Data processing and preparation is a complex and time consuming and is part of any data quality. Don't rely only on computer or artificial intelligence to correct the data or to do this convert conversion. You need to go thoroughly in the data set and check the data cells and make sure that the conversion from your questionnaire results and the codes or your equipment or your devices that are measuring, you have continuous measurement. There is no outliers. There is a proper consistent information. Data coding involves data inspection. So inspection is so important. And data coding is not only transforming the responses into numbers. It also involves checking for errors, checking for missing information, doing imputation. I, we talked today about five types of, of imputation. And you need to report all imputation actions as part of your data set. Uh, description and documents and on the opposite. Once we find a data set without imputation, without errors, we start to become suspicious. So it's very normal to include it as part of any real process of data collection. Use statistical software and start using spreadsheets early on and get familiar with them because later on you need to work and apply your statistical test and for sure check the internal consistency of your data set and the reliability and use the Kornbrach uh, alpha test as one of the ways to check the consistency and reliability of your data set. Well, this is the end of today's presentation. I invite you to watch further following videos that will go deeper with statistical analysis. And I thank you very much for your attention. Today's presentation was about data processing in observation research. Thank you very much.